Believe it or not, Sony is likely the most important name in e-readers and e-ink in general. They've existed since 2004, and predated Kindle by many years. They've also made more e-readers than most other manufacturers in their impressive 18-year run. But what happened? Where are they now? Well, sit back, relax, and let Goody Reader take you through the history of Sony e-readers. Most people know Sony for the Sony Reader, and others may know it from the Sony note-taking digital paper. But there was a few things that happened before that, so let's take you back a little bit. In November 2007, Amazon released the first Amazon Kindle ebook reader. This was the first e-reader ever made. Or was it? Actually, it wasn't. In fact, before the Amazon Kindle, many, many years before, in 2004, the Sony Librier EBR 1000 EP was released in Japan. It featured a 6-inch screen with 800 by 600 resolution, 170 PPI, with 10 megabytes onboard storage and a memory stick support. It weighed 300 grams and came with an AC charging adapter. It retailed for 7,800 yen or around $70 American. It won a gold medal in the display material component category at SID Display 2005 in Boston. Believe it or not, things were only going to get started from here. Sony has single-handedly kicked off the e-reader industry. Two years later in 2006, Sony released their follow-up model, the PRS 500. This featured a 6-inch display and an internal memory of 64 megabytes. This update actually allowed people to support EPUB and Adobe DRM formats, and add the ability to reflow PDF documents which has basically become commonplace in e-readers today. This device was still utilizing the proprietary Sony memory stick that only gave you a maximum of 4 gigabytes external storage. Precisely one year later, they discontinued the 500 and released the PRS 505 in October of 2007. This kept the same 6-inch display of the original one but it used an improved version of e-ink's Visplex imaging film with a faster refresh time, brighter white state, and 8-level grayscale. The 505 was also thinner than its predecessor at only 8mm versus 13. It also had 256 megabytes versus the previous version's 64. The 505 also brought the ability to support SDHC memory cards which means high capacity. Alongside the 505, in 2008, Sony released the PRS 700. This had a touchscreen and a virtual keyboard, making it the first device from Sony to be able to annotate digital books. Not only that, the biggest thing about this unit is that it had LEDs on the side to light up the screen, which we wouldn't see for four years until Barnes & Noble did the glow light on the Simple Touch Nook with glow light. In 2009, the ever famous PRS triplets were born, and that is the PRS 300, 600, and 900 daily edition. Let's start with the PRS 300. This was launched in August of 2009 and was known as the Pocket Edition. It was 5 inches, making it the first mini e reader in the industry. It had a low resolution at 800 by 600 but actually had 512 megabytes of RAM on board, and it was only $150. The PRS 600 was released in August as well, and was known as the Touch Edition. This instead had a 6-inch touchscreen with the same resolution, however the 600 was available in three different colors, black, silver, or red. A few months later in December, the PRS 900 came out known as the Daily Edition. 
This was a 7.1 inch screen. Yes, a 7.1. This also had 3G access through TNT at the time in a manner similar to Kindle's WhisperNet. This also enabled landscape viewing mode so you could have side-by-side -side page views just like a real book. This also had 1024 by 600 resolution with two gigabytes of internal storage, the highest for its time. 2010 is when Sony really started taking off. The PRS line was a success, so they announced successors to each of the three units. The 350, the 650, and the 950. The PRS 350 was and still is being sold even 12 years later, believe it or not. This was called the Pocket Edition, and it features the same 5-inch screen E-Ink Pearl 800x600, but has 2 gigs on board storage, high-speed micro SD, and it came in 5 different colors, pink, silver, blue, red, and black. The PRS 650 is one of the most well-known e-readers in the industry. This is a 6-inch touchscreen E-Ink Pearl, 800x600 with an SD card slot and 2 gigs of onboard storage. It came in black, silver or red, and had a wide variety of formats like EPUB, PDF, TXT, RTF, and even Microsoft Word. Finally, the PRS 950 Daily Edition launched in August of 2010, replacing the older PRS 900 and offered both Wi-Fi and 3G wireless. This featured a 7-inch E-Ink Pearl screen, 1024 by 600 with 2 gigs onboard storage, but it only came in silver. Up until now, Sony has been killing it in the e-reader game. They've controlled a market share of their own, and they were a worthy competitor. And in the following year, they started off some of the most popular e-readers of all time, the T-Series. In 2011, the Sony PRS-T1 was released. This was a 6-inch model using Wi-Fi with a touchscreen, and it had 2 gigs of onboard storage with 3 different colors, black, red, and white. It also supported micro SD, doing away with the Memory Stick Pro and supported up to 32 gigabytes. This is when we really started to see Sony modernize their lineup. Gauging the success of the T1, encouraged Sony to make another one. In the following year of 2012, the T2 came out. This featured a lot of the same functions as the T1, however was overall more refined, had added dictionaries, the ability to add notes, and export to Evernote which was not available on the previous iteration. This also had language options and four translation dictionaries built in. While there were more players in the game than ever, with Barnes & Noble, Kobo and of course Amazon releasing devices at a rapid pace, Sony wasn't ready to stop either, and in 2013, Sony released its final e-reader, the Sony PRS-T3. Released in October, this will be the last e-reader Sony will have ever made. It had a budget price point at only $99, a 6-inch screen, lightweight design, and 1024 by 758 resolution, up from 800 by 600. It came in all new colors like glossy red, matte black, and even white. However, 2014 marked the end of the Sony Reader. On February 6th, Sony announced that it was closing its North American, European, and Australian Reader stores, and migrating all of its customers to the Kobo Reader Store. Months went by, and feeling the strain from the competition of the big three, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo, in August, Sony announced that it would not release another e-reader. But we skipped over something, didn't we? Something happened in April of the same year. Something important. And something that would change the industry as we knew it. Up until now, companies primarily made e-readers as there was no other practical application for e-paper at the time. Everything seemed to change when the Sony DPT-S1 came onto the scene. 
It offered something significantly different. Large screen e-ink note taking with a stylus. People were enamored and this set off a chain of reactions that would continue to snowball essentially to date. The Sony DPT-S1 had a 13.3 inch e-ink screen with a stylus. This meant you could take notes on e-paper, thus replacing stacks upon stacks of actual paper. But there was a problem. When this device came out, you couldn't buy it. It wasn't available to anybody. It was only available to a select few of professionals and professionals only. In fact, the only way to buy it upon its release was through four specific resellers. A law institution, a medical institution, a production studio company, and one other. You couldn't buy it in the stores and you couldn't buy it on the Sony website. Also, it was over $1,000 at time of release, making it the most expensive e-paper product ever. So there was a lot wrong with this unit. So why was it so right? Because it offered something that no one has ever done before, note taking. It opened the eyes of many users into realizing multiple use case scenarios for e-paper. However, after a while it became available through normal retail platforms and people started to get their hands on them. Reception was incredibly positive. So positive that yes, they made a second generation. In 2016, the Sony DPT RP1 became available. This device, even six years later, is still regarded as the best note-taking feel of any e-note. This unit was still a 13.3 inch device as that is what set Sony apart from everyone else in the industry. This time it had a few more features, like an updated stylus that you can charge with a USB cable, multiple buttons, and even an NFC sensor for added security. This release was promoting security above all else. Encrypted files, keycard access, password protect, and a lot more. One thing they did kind of hit themselves in the foot with was that it could only read PDFs. But no one really seemed to mind. In fact, this unit is still being sold to this very day and is supported as well. Not only that, it is so popular that four other manufacturers have emulated and white labeled these units into their own. Fujitsu with the Quaderno, Quirk Logic Paper from Canada, Dasung with the A4, and the Alteric Note from Itochu in Japan. What made this generation so popular was that it had an option for a Wacom digitizer from factory, which means you could use a normal stylus on it. It really did open the door up for many manufacturers to jump on board. Sony had an amazing career up until this point, and they weren't done yet. They had one trick left up their sleeve, one final release, and then they would be done for good. And that was in the following year of 2017, they would release their final e-paper device ever, the Sony DPT-CP1. This was a 10.3 inch with the exact same specs as the 13.3, but what this did was allow a far lower price point shaving off nearly half the cost as the screen technology was a little more easily obtainable as it was using a 10.3 inch panel. Other manufacturers jumped on board as well. Limfini started selling the white label versions of the 10.3 and Fujitsu picked it up as their cheaper entry level, the A5. Since digital note taking was announced by Sony, Countless manufacturers have followed suit and made both their own devices and entire lineups filled with nothing but e-paper note-taking units. And basically all thanks to Sony. What has Sony done for the e-paper world? A lot. They pioneered e-readers before the Kindle even existed, secured their own market share against some of the biggest mega-giants in the industry, and single-handedly launched an entire subsector of units. Sony may have closed down their Sony-style stores and stopped making ebook readers, but they're still not out. In fact, they do have a full line of e-paper products. The HUIS Smart Home Remote, the Fez Watch, the Fez Watch U Fashion, both the CP1 and the RP1, the Smart Band 2 Talk Smart Watch, and yes, to this day, they're still selling the Sony PRS350 Pocket and 
the T2. They've had the longest career in e-paper history of any major brand, starting before and outlasting countless other companies that have tried their hand at breaking into the e-reader world. Pitting up against other devices that are maybe more of a household name aside, you can't deny that Sony certainly has had the most influential impact on the entire world of e-paper.